Hello and uh, welcome. Thank you all very, very much for coming. I'm Jerry Ewing. I'm the editor of Prog Magazine. Uh, we're very proud to be putting this event on with Nuclear Blast here at uh, YouTube's London Space. Now, I can uh, I can assure you you're in for something special. We saw the band sound checking earlier and they're on top form. Um, sell a darling. A darlings <laughs> prog magazine we absolutely love the new album the spell which is going to be released on friday which i'm sure you're all going to go out and buy yeah. so please ladies and gentlemen big round of applause for seller darling
thank you so much for being here tonight. Very special kind of gig. I did a lot of talking today, a lot of cameras, two things that I feel very insecure about. But it was amazing. And um, so here comes the hard part. We're going to play some new songs for you now from our upcoming album, The Spell, which we have um, never performed before. So enjoy. <laughs>
night, yet somehow bitter juice ran down her throat. She composed for herself a final lullaby. For if to love is to die, then I shall enter the land of eternal dream, she sang. A nebulous sensation overcoming her, she felt hazy, yet stayed wide awake.
Can you see me searching for you? a bit weird but this is going to be our last song for tonight um, we're playing in London on, on our current UK tour I don't know when but you know you can check the interwebs and find out um, I'd like to take this opportunity all right just ask this sir in the front here um, I'd like to take this opportunity to thank everybody at Nuclear Blast everybody at YouTube um, Prague magazine UK this has been really fantastic for us and thanks all of you for coming here and listening to our music this is the spell
Thank you so much. So this was it. There's going to be a, a Q&A now. So you can ask us everything. We, we like weird questions. So yeah, it's going to be fun. Hey, well, that wasn't that fantastic. Absolutely superb. Sella Darling, big round of applause. So uh, who's Merlin, Merlin you're going to come up, then uh, Anna. Let's, let, let, I mean, let's start with you, Anna. <laughs> you got a tough job there. Flute, hurdy-gurdy, singing. I mean, how was that for you? Um, it's it's uh, my, my cognitive... Uh, it, it, th that this uh, describes how it is. I'm I'm very drained of, of brain capacity right now. So, I mean, because this, you know, the, the tour starts tomorrow, doesn't it? The UK tour. It it does. Yeah. yeah. So uh, as you said, this basically was you know the f first time people are getting to hear this music. So did you feel under a lot of pressure? And not not a lot of pressure, but very nervous. Um, the material we wrote for this album is a bit more. It's more difficult to play and uh, more elaborate and and we want to you know live up to the people's expectations so we we need to play that shit well you know <laughs> well i mean i think you did how was that for you sweaty as you just <laughs> yeah. noticed yeah. Yeah. yeah although i must compliment you on a quite fantastic beard thank you and uh, <laughs> right back to you <laughs> <laughs> so I mean, yeah, your first time playing this this material live. I thought it went brilliantly. I think, considering what it could have been, it went quite brilliantly. Yeah. <laughs> How was it for you? It was fantastic. Good, good. I mean, you guys enjoyed it, yeah? Yeah. yeah. So I mean, let's talk about the spell. Um, like you said, it's it's uh, it's a bit more complicated. Perhaps certainly, there's a lot to get your teeth into, um, and there's a really interesting backstory which I believe you came up with. So do you want to tell us a bit about the whole concept behind the album? I believe I must. <laughs> um, well, the the idea of the story of the of the concept is based on a very old motif, which is a uh, death and the maiden. It has been depicted not only in classical music but also in poetry and art and uh, and I wanted to take this motif and create my own story out of it. So I actually wrote a, a story, not only song lyrics, and that is of. Um, a girl who falls in love with the personification of death and on this album we follow her as she as she travels all around the world trying to reconcile with her love but is unable to because as you heard in our last song that we played death has cast a spell of eternal life on this girl um, with her being oblivious to it so she she tries and tries and she cannot find love in death <laughs> That's, it's very uplifting <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, it, that kind of, it's complex, obviously, but that, that sort of narrative gives you something to really get your teeth into. And you could clearly feel that coming through in the music. Definitely. And we, this is the first time we actually wrote the music according to a lyrical guideline. So we had the track list and the story before we wrote the music. And it was really, it was a very creative process because we ended up really. Um, discussing how can we make this song sound like Burn? How can we make it sound like Freeze? Th those are the song titles. And that was really interesting. I mean, y you guys, so Anna comes up with this story. <laughs> and and, and uh, how does she sell it to you guys? Say, this is what we're going to do. There's no selling needed. I, I was right. thrilled. I love concept albums. I, I love big progressive albums so well, i know you do because i've read the with the feature at the in the latest yeah. issue of classic wrote you're quite open about your love of concept albums and hey we're prog magazine we love a good concept album yeah it's, it's a match made in heaven really. <laughs> yeah. so i mean it, it, and musically i, I mean it's sort of is it does it make it easier for you to sort of go all oh, right you could you, you wrap yourself around the concept and then sort of the musical ideas of where you want to go perhaps come easier at first it was actually a bit harder because I was not used to write songs based on a specific story right. but once uh, we got into it it became easier so it's pretty weird you know it's now I couldn't think of doing it the other way around again so let's see what we do next if we do another concept again would make sense but I mean, sticky, sticking with the conceptual idea, I mean, what, one thing that I really, really enjoyed was the, the visuals that were going on on the screens behind you. And that's all linked in, isn't it? And it, have you done that for every song on the album? 
We're going to have a video for every song, so 13 videos in total that are done by Costin Chioriano, which is probably not how you pronounce his name. <laughs> um, I should really learn that. Um, yeah, and we, we just thought it, we want to have only animated videos and we want to keep ourselves out of the, the picture because it's a, a fictional world and you're not, you're not supposed to get you know, torn out of that by seeing us humans. But it also, I think, it really enhances the the whole live presentation, and I it, it it allows I think that the people out there that are watching you to also get far more involved with what you're playing live. Absolutely, yeah, and I I guess what makes our album special is that you can you can basically enjoy it in different ways. You know, you can, um, and we also encourage you to come up, you know, with your own visuals and your own interpretation of the story which is really easy if you if you just keep it to yourself and and you don't go digging about you know fun facts uh, to the story but you can also you know dive right in and you can get the audiobook that comes with the album and then you'll really have the story as it was written originally but i think the great thing about music is that you can enjoy it in so many different ways and obviously with the whole yeah you know, as you just said the audio book and everything there's a, there's a whole presentation here that, that allows the fans to get involved on so many different levels yeah exactly um so the tour starts tomorrow tomorrow yep tomorrow. uh you're looking forward to getting back on the road and playing live very much very yeah. much so is that is that where i mean obviously I mean, what's what's it like for as as a band? Some bands love just you know being in the studio and, and making the record, and, and others for them it gets real when they get out on the road. Is that what's it like for you, for Seller Darling? I would say it's the same, or it's very different. You know, you're in a very different state of mind when you're writing us the songs. You don't think at all of going out with your art. You just do whatever comes out of you. Then once it's done, you think like, okay, so what shall we do? Oh, let's go on tour. <laughs> and then something changes, you know, s the perception of the songs also change because you have to like bring it to the people. I suppose there's another interesting facet as well, of course. I mean, obviously, like you, like you said, today was sort of the first time that, that you're airing these for other people that are watching, that are watching you. Um, the, the, the songs probably will take on a life of their own in the live context as well. I I don't I don't know. Um, <laughs> I haven't thought about that yet. Like ra as as of now, we're trying to really play the songs as they are on on the album. Um, so you know, session musicians are involved. Um, we have the keyboard player of Appearance of Nothing who are on tour with us, and so we really, uh, if we get the possibility, we want every instrument that is on the album to be presented live will not always have the possibility to do that, so we'll have to come up with different interpretations of the songs. But as of now, I think we're pretty much playing them as they are on the CD. And you've, you've, you've encountered that first hurdle. You've played some of them live, and it must feel pretty good, and you're about, you know, you're about to hit the road. Well, I personally was terrified, but it, it felt, pretty <laughs> felt pretty okay. You look pretty relaxed now, I have to say. So. Yeah. So you guys, I mean, you, know, you, must, you have fun out on the road? Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I think we're ready. Yeah. I mean, it, it, it must feel good as well. I mean, the album's out, like we said, on um, on Friday, um, and you actually get out to actually interact with the people that are buying it, who you know, who are going to invest in the, the songs that you've written, and you know, you're going to get that that instant feedback from them as well. Yes. Um. <laughs> and, you, and you're looking forward to that? <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. It's, it's amazing. And, and just to mention it, we love playing in the UK. That's actually the reason why we wanted to have a kind of... I mean, it's not an official album release, but the first people to hear the album will be people in the UK because we got such an amazing response when we came here for the first time. And we didn't know what to expect, you know, as a new band. And, yeah. And, so cl and clearly a connection that's you know, not only remain, but one you're really keen to build on. Yeah, yeah, apparently we belong here. and well, It's great. I mean, I thought, they, I thought they not only belonged here, but owned the stage tonight, didn't you guys? Um, listen, Anna and um, Merlin and Eva, thank you all very much. I thought it was absolutely fantastic. Um, thanks to Nuclear Blast and to YouTube for, for you know, getting involved with Prog Magazine. Do this. Thank you guys for coming and uh, get out on the road and see Stella Darling. 
Sell it, darling.